Hello guys, welcome back. I have a lesson that I know is going to be very impactful for you. When you understand the concept of mathematics, you're going to feel so empowered. You're going to have confidence and you're going to know when you make a mistake. You're going to know how to compare fractions. You're going to know how to order fractions. So the lesson for today that you will learn is how to estimate fraction. Okay, we're going to estimate fraction to three different benchmark. The first benchmark is going to be zero, one half, and a whole. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is to draw a number line because I don't want to teach you any rules or what to look for. You need to be able to know how to find your solution without memorization. So let's go ahead and I want to point out to you what I need you to see, what you need to know. Whenever you do a number line, write a number line or create a number line, you got to always start with zero. Please do not forget that. If you look on a ruler... Every ruler always start with zero. So when you are, it's basically increments you're going to be counting. So we're going to start by labeling my number. This is going to be zero, my first number. We said that there's going to be eight equal parts, but I need to make sure. When you start counting, do not start with zero. Please don't. You're going to start with this number, number one right here right here start here so i'm going to say one two three four five six seven eight so i'm going to stop right here i'm going to put eight out of eight right here because that represents one whole all right also one thing for you to keep in mind when we're talking about fraction this is not drawn to scale so it means that when we talk about fraction all the parts must be equal. So the distance from one point to the next should be the same. Um, naturally, I did not measure. I just did a draw, a, a little estimate. I just try to get an idea based on my visual, my um, visually what it looks like to make sure that they're the same. But they should be supposed to be the same. Technically, they really don't look like the same. But you know it's not drawn to scale, so I'm going to write one eight here, two eights, three eight, four eights, five eights, six eights, seven eights, and we have eight eights. If I were to continue this pattern, you would have nine eights right here. And we know that the number on the top is bigger. So that's going to be 1 and 1 eighth, but that's another lesson. Now, let's talk about estimation. We're going to locate our benchmark. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And the 0 represent my first benchmark. 4 out of 8 represent half. So if you have 8 things and you give away 4 of them, you gave away half of them. So therefore, your benchmark for half is right here. Another example for a half would be 5 out of 10, 3 out of 6, 4 out of 8, which is what we're doing right now, 10 out of 20, 50 out of 100, and so on and so forth. So where one hole is going to be 8 out of 8, so I'm going to put 1 here. And now you can see visually that 1 eighth is close to 0. Look at it. It's adjacent to zero. It's right next to it. So I can say one eight is close to zero. So if I were to estimate this, I would say, well, it's close to zero. And to bring it into context, if you have eight dollars, right? Eight singles. And let's say you lose one of them. It is no big deal. You're not going to cry over it. No, you're going to be okay because you still have seven of them. So that's the reason why I could say, if I ask you how much money did you lose, you could, you, could, you could say, well, I lose about zero. 
right? So that's the reason why it makes sense for one eighth to be estimated to be zero. Four eighths is a half, it's exactly a half. So if you take a look at this number right next to four eighths, is five eighths. So you would say five eighths is a little bit more than a half. Three eighths is a little bit less than a half because four eighths represent a half. To the right is more, to the left is less. Let's take a look at seven eighths. So if I were to estimate five eighths, I would say more than a half. But technically, we're doing three benchmark. So five eighths would be about a half. Seven eighths, on the other hand, is closer to one whole in terms of distance. It's only one space away from it. Seven out of eight is one space away from it. Therefore, I could say that seven eight is close to one whole. And if you were to lose seven dollars, if you have eight dollars, right? And you lose seven of them, you're gonna be quite upset, right? Because maybe you wanna go buy some ice cream or something, right? And if you lose that $7, you don't have it. So therefore, you'd be very upset and it represents the fact that almost all of it, almost all of your money is lost. And for those of you who are not aware that I have a uh, accent, I'm sure you've figured it out by now, but I just said ice cream and I'm, I'm pretty sure I might have added an H there, so it's gonna sound weird to you. But it's supposed to be I C E, I C E C R E A M, but because of my Jamaican accent, especially the region in Jamaica that I came from, I don't pronounce the H, and the reason for that is because of the time when Jamaica was colonized by Spain. So I think during that time we adapted the Spanish language, and even though Great Britain, England took over, I think that's the part of uh, that's the part of the um the language that many people in Jamaica kept. So that's the main reason why we don't pronounce H or we add H or it's a lot of confusion, but you understand, I hope. Anyway, that concludes this portion of the lesson. I'm going to be do doing some more lesson and how to estimate sums and differences, how to compare fractions, order fractions, because these are gonna be very relevant later on when you have middle school math, when you work with negative numbers, positive numbers, it will become so important to you. So I hope you take some time to pay attention to the video. And also, I know many people may say, why didn't she edit the video? What's our problem? But I don't want to edit the video because when students are in the classroom, they don't get to turn their teachers off. And I want to be as authentic as possible. I want to make it meaningful because my objective is to ensure that my students are motivated, make sure my students learn and understand the concept um, to the best of my ability. So you guys, you have a wonderful, wonderful day. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email address is on my website and I'm going to share that with you pretty soon. All right. But for now, please just send me a message. I can be reached at njlearningforall at gmail.com. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.